everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be talking about glue. Now this is something that I get asked about a lot. Nearly every tutorial somebody will ask me what glue I'm using, what one I prefer, those general kind of questions. So I this has been something I've wanted to do for a while and some of you may have noticed that over the last maybe few months I have been using different glues in some of my tutorials because I've been wanting to test a lot of them just so I can really kind of get a, a really good idea on how they work in order for me to give you guys a real kind of honest review on them. So I have here 16 glues. Now I'm fully aware that these are not all the glues. There are thousands of glues around the world. I'm based in the UK so these are the glues that I can get hold of easily. The ones that I feel are quite common, the ones that I see a lot of other YouTubers use and other bloggers that I follow, these are glues that they, you know, mentioned along the way. So I've, yeah, I think I've got, I, I would probably say the most popular kinds, but there are, I know already a few that I still haven't yet to try. There's a Nuvo premium one that I haven't tried yet, which is meant to be very good as well. So, and I know that everybody's going to have a preference. There's going to be some people that are still looking for that great glue. So hopefully maybe I will show you some here and you'll think, wow, I'd like to try that one. But if you have a glue that you love and enjoy, that's fine. I'm not here to tell you not to use that one. That's not what this is about at all. This is about me just introducing you to some other glues, my feelings towards them and the ones that I think are better um, than others and the reasons why. So what I've gone and done is i done this swatch earlier because I wanted everything to dry just again so you can see how they kind of look on paper. So the majority here are water-based and that was that's one of the things which is not really what you want in a glue when we're using paper because it's what will cause warping. Now there are some glues here that will do that less and then there's others that I've seen when I show you the little swatches that I've done have created quite a lot of warping. But the glues are all good in their own way because they can be used for other things and not everybody will use the glues to cover a large surface area. So majority of the time when I do mats and layers I will use a double sided tape. However the glue that I've now found to be the best in my eyes I would use for matting and layering no problem at all because it creates absolutely no warping whatsoever. So the first one actually I'm going to talk about is the Kalau All Purpose Glue and that is this one here. And in my eyes it is amazing. It is an absolutely brilliant glue and I think the reason for this is is that it's a solvent based glue, it isn't a water based. So it does absolutely, literally does not create any buckling or warping and I will show you again the swatches in a moment. Now what you can see from here and I don't know how well it's picking up, if I flip this over you can see a lot of this buckling and warping that I'm talking about. But the Kalau is the one, check I'm on the right corner, yeah, up here in this corner it is flat, it is completely flat and you can see that nothing has come through this corner of the card and that is the only one where the Kalau is. And the other thing I love about this is how clear it is and you can actually use it as a feature on your cards and I have used this to create that kind of wet look over my nautical themed cards. So I've used it over a fish stamp for example to make it look like it's underwater. So it's got those great properties to be able to use it not only as a glue but also as a feature. So this one is, is really really surprised me and I love it. Now it has a, I would guess it's kind of like a bit of a precision nozzle on it. I like that it has this kind of twist cap so you don't, haven't got to worry about losing a lid, you just twist it and it closes so it's, it's great for that as well. It's very easy to use and because it's very, relatively runny you don't have to wait for ages to kind of shake it upside down which is another good thing. So and you just apply like so and then if I just bring this one up so you can get relatively thin lines there Okay, so that's how it comes out and like I said it is very very clear. So I'll pop that to one to one side. And for this here I have also done the matte and layer. So the black card is just from a local shop, it's 216 GSM. It's a common weight that I use and then this is on the 300 GSM card blanks that I use. And you can see there it is completely flat, it's brilliant. If I was to push it with my ruler, try and get my ruler underneath, it just pushes it away. It is as flat as flat can be. And that's amazing for using a liquid glue for your matting and layering. So if that was a card now, I'd have no problem giving that to someone because it hasn't curled at all. Then the next one is the Cosmic Shimmer. Now I will share links and everything below because a lot of these can come in different sizes as well. These are the sizes that I've got. But this one here is a 
specialist acrylic glue okay so this one here it is a water-based glue okay so just take that one off there and this has again this is a little bit fiddly I'm not a massive fan of these little bits but I get that they want them on there so that it doesn't dry up and then that one there so you can see you can get some really really thin lines so again if you are using it on any kind of dyes and stuff like that then you can you know it will work and then when this one dries it dries slightly cloudy it's got a bit of a matte finish if you compare it to how shiny this one is here it's a little bit more matte but very smooth and um, yeah it dries you know it dries fine and then here is it on the larger matte and layer and you can see there's just a very slight arch it just kind of bows just slightly this way so if I was to lie that one down and go in there and the ruler will kind of lift if I push the glues out of the way a little bit here you can see you can probably see it's kind of rocking a little bit it kind of goes underneath so there is a slight bowing to it as opposed to this one here it is completely straight okay but still nice glue nice to apply lots of people use it and enjoy it but I just want to kind of for me it's all about the warping I'm, I've always been, it's always been my thing when it comes to glue especially when we're working with paper okay so next is the taser multi-purpose glue now I really like the bottle for this one um, purely because it has this nozzle where it has this flat tip so the idea is is that when you actually go to apply the glue as you squeeze it it kind of spreads the smallest amount that you need so you're not actually using a lot of the glue and I like it's got a nice little clip in lid there it's a watery consistency so again it runs to the end quite freely you're not having to kind of sit there for ages shaking it but again it's a very very clear glue now when that dries it dries very very smooth and very flat it's the flattest of all the glues here you know if I rub my finger over all of these I can feel them whereas that one apart from it feeling smooth you can't feel any difference in the level so if you want to use it on your cards to add a feature it's a really good glue for that because you can actually put it over maybe you've distressed a background with a color you might be doing again an underwater theme you might have a blue background if you were to put that over the top it would create the look that it's actually water and I again I think that's quite nice because it is good to be able to use the glues in other ways apart from them just obviously just as a glue to stick stuff down so that's the taser glue again just show you this one here and it's it's pretty good it's got a little bit here it's kind of gone off slightly and maybe a few of the ends have dipped but you could still use that quite nicely to mat and layer and the one thing I will notice is it's got it's really rigid it's created a real kind of strong hold uh, again you use the Kalau that's pretty it's not like it's not something that's easy to bend it's created a real nice strong layer in between my cardstock so if you imagine once I put more color if I was to put pass and paper on top of that again the cards become very very strong that one it's actually quite soft it's not it's definitely not as strong as these so again that's something else it's hard for me to tell you the feeling of that through obviously the video but if you've got these glues yourself then you will know so next I've got the original high tack all-purpose very sticky glue I've had this one a long time uh, you can get this in hobby craft it's pretty cheap it is it's okay it was one of them that did come out pretty it's very thick and it did warp the card more than most there's another one as well that came out quite bad with the the warping side of things now it's here you can see how thick it is it just has a very very thick look to it. it's very lumpy and again it did create a significant amount of warping there it's not the easiest to squeeze out now when you have to cut the tops of these you always want to start cutting from the top and just work your way down bit by bit until you start to kind of reveal the hole. The last thing you want to do is just cut right into these, always cut on an angle as well, but cut right in and you've cut the hole too thick and then you're getting loads of it coming out. But also at the same time, you can't have the hole too thin because it's a thick glue, it just won't come through and you will really be squeezing it. So yeah, do kind of work your way down with it and then it does tend to get, like this one has, get clogged up. So I'm just going to use my pokey tool there just to pick out 
there it is, and you can kind of pull out all the dry glue. Whereas with those other ones up until this one, they've all got a little lid on them, a little cap, whereas these ones don't. But doesn't you could easily make something, but there's a lot clogged up in this one. Okay, finally I got that out. It did take me a while, but now when it comes out, you'll see just how much, you know, quite a lot comes out. So if you imagine now, that's all got to, you know, seep into the cardstock so you can see exactly why it would warp. But yeah, don't try not to cut too much away. Try and really get it down to as small as you can manage when you squeeze it out because it is a nice sticky glue. It's good for, I would say, well, what I've used it for in the past is, you know, sticking down like some, maybe some flowers if I don't want to use my hot glue gun and just more like accessories, you know, features on my cards or my projects rather than the actual paper itself. So that's that one there. And then if I just bring in... And this is the largest swatch and you can see there there's quite a lot of bowing in this you know it's really really lifted so if this was a front of your card it's just yeah it's not something that i for me i would like so it would bug me so yeah that's the the, the finish on that one how it will leave your paper but again if you've got an even heavier card stock it will hold that even more so if i was to stick that with a water color card it probably wouldn't warp half as much you probably wouldn't really even see it because that card can hold it it can hold the water that's in this more than it can so the thinner the paper the worse the warping is going to be the thicker the paper obviously the better if you use that on grey board it will be fine you probably wouldn't even notice so that's why I mean there's nothing wrong with any of these it's the paper that you use with them which is going to obviously cause any issues regarding warping and stuff. So then I've got the Anita's Tacky PVA glue all the PVA means is polyvinyl acetate so it's, it's just it's when it dries it's just plastic so that's why I always say if you're sticking acetate sheets you know you're doing any of your kind of gift bags or fancy fold cards and you've got acetate in them it's like if I stuck, put this glue now on the lid once it dries you can just peel it off and that's exactly what you would do on the acetate which is why you always want to use a strong double-sided tape or like a red liner tape so this is the yeah, Anita's tacky glue again it was quite a lumpy glue you can see the little swatch there how it's finished it doesn't come out very smooth and again you have to cut the nozzle so again just don't go down too too deep because otherwise it will come out very very thick and again if I just squeeze this one out again it's got blocked up this is this is the only thing with these ones as well it, it is it does bug me that you do have to get out kind of the uh, the dried piece at the end I think I got it there we go oh and then you get that and there's it's just way too much and that is not I didn't cut it down too much I mean that's that's yeah it's not the hole isn't huge but it's just yeah so now if that was my card that I was now to stick on my you know card blank it would just warp really terribly because there is just a huge amount of glue on there so you do have to be careful with the application so always test it on maybe something else prior keep these to this side and then that one there is the Anita's tacky glue but I didn't put as much on here but you can see there is slight bowing I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible you can see it's just coming off to the edge so not as bad as the original high tack but there is some but again I think if you were to not put as much on there because a lot of the time all you need to do is just run a thin line around the four sides and stick it down so it's all about the application and how you use a lot of these glues as well then I've got the tonic tacky glue now this was another one that I found to be this was quite a watery glue so the finish is actually very very clear it's pretty shiny you know it's not too dissimilar I guess it's quite similar to the cosmic shimmer there actually but it's got a really nice smooth finish on the top this is it here super tacky PVA glue craft glue with extra fine precision tip so it is a smaller tip to the these ones here and again it has got a lid but I did find yeah you do get a little bit of build up now I've had this for a long time and when it comes out it's quite cloudy and very runny it's it, it was one of the runnier ones in terms of the white glues that I've got and again if I bring that up there you can see and this was one that came out very warped it's about the same as the this is it here you can see how much it's bent the card and I also found it to have quite a lot of I guess like a dimpling effect you could actually see it and I think that's because it is well you can see how it's come out it's just had quite a, a funny finish very similar to the high tack I can feel it on the card so those two there have quite a similar 
warping look to them. Okay, next up is the world famous art glitter glue. Everybody goes mad for this and yes, it is a good glue. Is it my favourite? No, my favourite is the Kalau. I think it's brilliant and it is value for money. However, this one here does have this precision nib and I think, to be honest, that is one of the reasons why it's so good. The glue itself, I think if you were to put that glue in, you know, this kind of nib bottle or even one of these, it still would warp your card and it has it has warped my swatch and it's warped the other size I'll show you in a moment and it's water based so it will do although I did read somewhere I think it was online that it did say prevents warping but it doesn't so anyway so yeah it's a good glue it does frustrate me that you have to have the pin I get it I know you need it because it does clog up but it's got to be stainless steel I've lost this pin I don't know how many times yeah it is a bit irritating I like the fact that these you know the lid it's all on there that's it I just have to do that and put it away I know I'm not losing anything so yeah that's my kind of bugbear but going back to the glue itself it is very good and it is nice that you can just go right into just the smallest little corners there and it will I think mine's a bit blocked okay I've just unblocked it it should work better now that's what I mean so you've just got to make sure you always do that but anyway so now you can see when it comes out it is so thin and even though this is the small tube you get I think there's three other two other sizes there's this size a medium and the large one this is lasting a long time because such a small amount is coming out and it is very strong it you know it's got a very very quick stick like dry time so it sticks quickly so yeah great glue and it um I can see why people love it so much but it's not one that I will probably buy once this runs out I may well try other glues in the bottle and take the label off just because I've got the precision nib on here. But you can take these off and put it into other ones. So I could put it now on top of here. You just screw it kind of into the plastic. And now that one will go like so. You know, so let's actually try that. Let's have a look. Oh, it's come off. Let me just put that on there and see if this comes out. I'm intrigued now to see if it is down to the nib. Yes, it does. There we go. So the same glue, just with that precision nib. So yeah, see how many, see what glues you've got. See if you can get hold of these precision nibs and try them on something else. Like even, let's do a little test. This is a runnier glue. Let's pop it on this one because I think this will go through that. I'm going to use it on the back of one of these other ones because I've got these for the other glues to show you. There you go. So it does work. See, I now think that that won't cause as much warping because very little has come out and I can get that right up into the corners. Because again, it's a, it's a good glue, it's a sticky glue. But yeah, so I think a lot of it is down to this precision tip and I just, I think that's one of the reasons why people love it so much because you don't have to use so much. But do I think the glue itself is the best ever? No, not at all. So I think it's down to the nib. Anyway, let's get back on track to where we were. So, pop that one back. I'm definitely going to be trying that on some more glues. And there is my art glitter glue. And you can see it's just ever so slightly just kind of bowing out there. And if I was to just grab my ruler, you can see it's lifted up on the sides. If I put my ruler under, it does then catch. So it's kind of lifted that way, but still good. Okay, so this is the Dawn Bibby. So this is, when I got the Art of Glitter Glue, I thought there has to be somebody in the UK that has something similar. I mean, come on guys, we make great craft products. Surely we can make a great glue as well. So I found the Dawn Bibby ones. Now you get two of these in a pack. So I do have the two here and these are 50 mil, but they come with the precision little tip here that you have to put on you just unscrew but these ones didn't come with a pin neither did the art glitter glue actually but this is even smaller than the art glitter glue because I can't put this pin although this one may work but I can't put it in in there so I have been fighting to find a stainless steel pin that actually fits in this so I do have a little tub of them here bound one that works but I don't think it's stainless steel all that will happen is you'll get a rust a kind of forming around the top so it's not the end of the world you just have to you know squeeze it until you get rid of it but this is you know I think very very similar so again let me grab my little swatch you can see there you get a really nice fine line and that's slightly thinner than the uh, art glitter glue because this is a smaller nib but again you can get right in to all those little corners there 
so it is very very good it's great if you haven't stuck something down and you just want to you know get a little bit of glue in underneath both of these are great for that because I have used it I've just lifted up something and just squeezed a bit of glue in there so yeah they are they are good and then I have the Dawn Bibby one here which again you can see there it's about the same as the art glitter glue if I bring that one back in again you know there's it's yeah it's just minimal it's not much there at all okay then it's the Tombow glue so this is another one of my favorites it's something you would have seen me use a lot I kind of got onto it really through my mum because she buys a lot of stamping up products and it's the glue that stamping up promote and sell on their page so it is good I like that it has the jewel nib so you do have the kind of what well, they call it a pen tip on that end and then you have the broad tip on this end I actually always forget to use that one it's very similar thinking about it to the top of the taser one that one's slightly angled this one's completely flat but again it will kind of do the same thing and just spread out that glue the first of the tacky glues that I've got so what I mean by that and it's funny when some of these glues say tacky for example that says tacky to me tacky is when it's dry it's still tacky whereas this here is just a liquid glue but it is tacky because now it's still sticky so the great thing about that is I'm getting glue everywhere now the great thing about that is if you want to use any foiling if you want to use any gilding flakes you can add that over the top so if you want to create a nice frame around maybe one of your cards you can go and put a strip of this glue around let it completely dry and then go and add to it so it has some nice kind of technique properties to it as well so that is why it's good and it is just so so sticky it people have a love-hate relationship with Tombow it's not one of those glues you want to get near the edge so when you are matting and layering you want to make sure that you kind of keep it within the middle and don't really go off to the edges if it does bleed out what I see a lot of people do is they start playing with it while it's still wet you need to let it dry let it dry clear and I always say use one of these have one of these um Xyron or just an adhesive rubber this is a Xyron one but any adhesive rubber and it will just when it's dry just buff over it and it will remove it instantly so it won't ruin your projects because as soon as you start playing with a wet glue if you've got even if your hands are clean you know you start playing with it it's just going to start going kind of muddying up so you want to kind of not do that but here again it's got quite a thin nib on it but that is kind of what I would do maybe you could go a little bit out there but you almost want to then move the glue don't squeeze any more out but it's a great glue. It can be a little bit pricey, but I will share the link to the company I use. It's called Stuff UK, and they actually sell 10 bottles for 20, 22 pound. I think that's including postage, which works out a lot cheaper because these are sold for nearly five pound a bottle. So yeah, me and my mum go halves and I was able to, you know, kind of get a bit of a bargain really with those. So that's the Tombow, and again, it holds up really well. Sorry, that's my chair squeaking. It does hold up well on my larger mat here. There it is there. So you can see there's very little. Try and get it straight up to the camera as possible. There. Pretty, pretty minor warping. So again, it's another good one to use on larger surface areas. Then you've got the Kalau Quick Dry Tacky Glue. So it has the same nozzle because it's the same obviously Kalau, this one here as well. But I wouldn't say it's tacky. So anyway, maybe obviously the term tacky that's used in the glue industry means different to what I think it means. So that's fine. Again, this one I found to come out quite fast and you don't really want to squeeze it too much. So, and it seems to be blocked. Let's try again. Okay. You don't need to squeeze too much. As you can see, that's, I'm hardly squeezing it at all. It's quite a gloopy, thick, runny if it can be all those things but yeah you do a lot of it comes out so yeah that's how it looks and on here it was still even though that's completely dry it was the cloudiest of them all you can see it's got quite a cloudy finish to it there and also I didn't really show you the art glitter in the Dawn Bibby slightly different that's a lot more translucent you can really see through that whereas that again the Tombow I found um, the art glitter glue I did find to be a bit cloudy again that's not that's not a bad thing it's just so I can see the difference with these here Tombow's got a bit, a bit sticky, it's got some of my post-it note paper on it there. But yeah, the Kalau is very thick and very, very cloudy. And on its larger swatch here, this one here, I don't think it was too bad. Yeah, it was, again, it had a bit of dimpling. It's quite, you can't really see it, but it's it's got quite a few kind of, almost, yeah, 
lots of different layers to it. It's a heart, can you kind of see, it kind of goes like this, and on that, in as you actually feel it, you can really see it is kind of, it's, it's kind of hard to, but you can see here, but then can you see, you can see all of the card here, if I show you there. Just take my word for it. It, it, it does have warping to it, but it's almost all through the card, if that makes sense. Okay, then we've got the Aline's Tacky Glue. So this is another favourite of mine. This is one I've been using for years, and it's my favourite bottle, and it's the, the reason why it's the only one that is upside down, or, in my eyes, the right way up, because I think all glues should be made like this, because there's nothing worse, especially with, you know, anything like this. When you're down to the very bottom, you've got to sit there. If this is a thick glue for ages. I mean, I know we keep them kind of upright, or, you know, we keep them stored. I know people make little adhesive kind of holders and stuff, but why can't all glues just do that? It's brilliant. So it sits in its own like kind of little holster there and I love it. Now this style I don't believe is readily available in all kind of markets. I think it was only really in maybe the US and like the Asian markets because I can't find this style bottle in the UK. We do sell this in Hobbycraft but it is this way up. So yeah, I'm not too sure why that is. If it's an old style or yeah what their reasonings are behind it, but I really like it. Here is my little swatch of it, so it's pretty standard. Dries relatively clear, and then the swatch here, it comes out pretty well as well in terms of warping. I have used it occasionally on large areas, but not a lot, but there it is there. It's got a slight arch over to, yeah, you can just about, there we go, you can just see it there, but it's not too bad but I like it. It's pretty good value for money. It lasts ages. It's very, very thick though. So the one thing I would say is it's not the easiest to get out. So like it, yeah, if I show you here, you can see it's not, it doesn't just come out with ease. It doesn't just glide. You've got to kind of really work it and I really have to push that. So that may be a problem for some if you struggle, you know, with grip or with any dexterity kind of issues with your hands. I would say out of them all, that is one of the hardest ones, but Ironically, it's actually still one of my favourites. So I think sometimes you just get used to what you've always had as well. This is one of the glues I used in the very early kind of stages. So it's something I've got used to, even though I know there's better glues, I still kind of, it's like I'm a little bit attached to it and I'll never get rid of that bottle. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it comes out there. Then I've got the Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to talk about the Lawn Fawn and the Gina K together because they're exactly the same. So the bottle's the same and they came out the same. I just, yeah, I don't quite under, well, I do get it. They're, they're clearly made in the same factory or the factory uses the same bottles because even the way they look is very, very similar. So here's the Lawn Fawn there and there's the Gina K and they look the same. They feel the same, they look the same, they cost the same. So <laughs> I don't know if there's bigger sizes. This was the only sizes I was available to get. There is quite a nice, I guess, feel to it. They're very easy to use. They're great, I guess, for traveling, you know, if you're crafting on the go. And they do have that precision kind of nib because they're very, very thin lines that you can get with it. So again, yeah, have, my only negatives are they're very, very small and they're the same yet two different companies so I don't know enough about it to really say too much so I'm sure if there's anybody that knows more can pop it in the comments below in terms of how they kind of worked they're pretty good they're not the best there was still warping but again they're water-based so there will be and you've got there's the lawn fawn so you can see it is just slightly arching and there is the Gina K connect this one's actually more kind of going that way it's like a bit there and then a bit there it's but it's still pretty good it's very smooth on top and again it's any of these if you're just using to stick down your dies and stuff they're going to be fine it's i'm showing you it this way just i guess so you can get a real good idea of how these are going to work so yeah that's those and then you've got the dovecraft acrylic glue which is this little bottle here and I do quite like this. It does come out very heavy. You do have to be careful. You don't want to squeeze it too much. It has got one of these kind of bits on it, which I'm not a fan of, but again, I get why they do it because at least it doesn't block up. And you just need to squeeze this ever so slightly because like I said, you can get a lot out. But the one thing that this does that I love because it's an acrylic glue is if you do like some little bits like this and then sprinkle some glitter over, it will hold the dimension. The dimension will not disappear or seep, in, seep into the cardstock. So 
if you want it, this is very cheap as well, you can pick this up in the pound shop, I've seen it for 50p in places as well, so I would use this more so for techniques and for adding dimension to your cards. So now you can see just how thick and how, how high those kind of blobs are, but like I said now if you sprinkle some glitter on there you've got some real nice little you know, detail on your cards or your paper craft. So it is good, it's very very thick, it's very clear as well, so again if you want to use it to create some texture on your cards then yes you can, it's extremely clear, it's just as clear as the Kalal there as well. So yeah I do like it, in terms of using for matting and layering it's not really that kind of glue, although it is I guess kind of classed as a liquid glue, I wouldn't use it to cover a large area, it did warp quite a lot and it's got quite again a bit of dimpling, I can kind of feel it on the card but I do still like it and I would still recommend to use it and get it because it's great for those techniques there that you can do because most of these glues they will all dip and sink into the cardstock. And then you've got the Stamping Up Fine tip glue, so this is this one here, again this is pretty good, it's, got, it's kind of gone off a little bit up this side here, kind of bending slightly, but another thing I love is the bottle with this, so this has a built in precision tip with the kind of pin already in the lid, so you can't lose it, it's brilliant, absolutely genius, and it is so fine, so if I, again, it's just lovely. You can see there how that comes out, and that is the finish that you get here. So again, very, very shiny, really nice and smooth, and yeah, it does hold up well for your mats and layers. It does lift, you can see that it's kind of rocking, so there is slightly some warping to it. But overall, it's still a good glue, but I do love that you do have this all built in together. And I have used this in place of glossy accents in the past, so this is what I've used. Because it's got that precision nozzle, I've been able to go over my kind of stamps really nicely. You would have seen it on some of my, my pop-up box where I'd done all the fish. They all had this over the top. And also there was another one that I made, I think it was a shadow box one with fish and I covered all the fish like this as well so they gave the illusion that they were all wet and it did look really good. And then the last one is the Nuvo Glue Pen which is this one here and this is the other tacky one so again you can see there it's still sticky. Now this is a great, you can use it for matting and layering and it was the other one that I found came out to be completely flat. So this one and the first one, the Kalau, I found that they were both completely flat. There you go there. So in terms of war warping and no warping, these are my two winners. But this isn't necessarily one that I would use for doing matting and layering, although you can. It is more, I think, for a technique um, kind of glue. And if I just bring in something that's dry, so there's the Kalau, so that one's dry now. Again, that's quite a cool effect, you know, to have that on a card, you know, I don't know. We, <laughs> we think of these things, but this one here, you have to kind of pump it to get it going and then you just kind of do that, just brush it, it's got quite a wide tip, it's got a wide nib on it there and then just let that dry, it's slightly got white areas to it, you'll know when it's completely dry because it will go clear and then it will stay tacky and you can add glitters to it, you can add foils, I've used this for adding foils to before, gilding flakes, so it's a great pen for again doing those techniques. There is my glue review, so I've tried to keep it as quick as possible, I didn't want to go into too much detail but I hope I've given you enough information and shown you kind of how they work, what you can use them for and so on and so forth. If there are other glues, like I said, there is that Nuvo, I think it's Specialist or Premium or something like that it's called, it's in a white bottle with silver Nuvo on it, I do want to try that one. But please let me know if there's any other ones that you'd recommend as well, and if I can get hold of them I will give them a go. But the one that I, you're going to see me now using a lot and I'm going to be buying more is this one here, I think it's fantastic. It just will work for everything and lots of things. That is my kind of overall winner, but then I still also love the my original tacky glue, I'm just a little bit attached to that one. The art glitter glue and the Dawn Bibby, but I think it's down to the fact that they've got these on because you saw that you can obviously attach it to different ones. So. I am going to try that again when I do some other card making and see if that makes a difference to the warping because it is still a nice glue to use. Again, that one there is very thick, I don't think that would get through one of the precision nibs, but we can try it. But those two, obviously for that reason. Then the Cosmic Shimmer is a nice one as well and that didn't cause too much warping. The Taser and the Stamping Up 
and the this one here and the pen. These ones are all ones that are good for techniques. So I wouldn't necessarily use these for matting and layering because I did get warping with this one and this one, but they create nice effects as well on the cards. You get dimension with that one. These are very clear, that's very smooth, and this one's tacky again, so obviously you can use it for other things. So they're good as well. I've got my Tombow, which I love. Again, another tacky glue, um, and it creates very little warping. These two are, are fine, but I don't think I'll be buying them again just because I found them to be quite expensive and it's a very small tube. Yes, they were imported from the US, but then so is a lot of these other ones as well. So, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, they're good glues, but they're not something I'm going to buy because of that reason. And then these ones here, I would say, are... If you're just starting out and you're deciding whether or not paper craft is something you want to kind of do long term, then I would say get these first and just play around, but don't go heavy with them. Try and use them as sparingly as possible because then that will give you the less warping. But um, yeah, they all work. Like I said, all of these glues work, they all stick, they all do what they say they're going to do. But for me, when we're using paper craft, and there's nothing worse than making a box, for example, and you've put all this glue on all of the sides with your pattern paper and it all starts to kind of buckle and warp. It just doesn't look good. You want to be using Kalau because that's brilliant. So yeah, by the way, I brought all of these glues. The only one I didn't and the only one I was gifted was this one by Taser. All the rest were purchased with my own money and this is my own opinions. I haven't been influenced by anybody. It's just my feelings and yeah, I've actually used them and you can see this is how they work. So I hope you found some information from this. I hope it's helped you in some way. I hope it's made you understand the glues a little bit more. Please comment below. Let me know if there's any other glues out there that you think I should try, any that you like. If there's any tips as well that you might have with some of these glues. I always like to see if there's any other fun ways to use the glues. But yeah, please give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.